Hey fellow Vault Wearers, it's Angry Turtle and today we are taking a closer look on the Gauss shotgun, the full guide in a turtle shell. As this gun is very unique, have a specific interactions with Demolition Expert and very specific interactions with Tenderizer, we'll cover it all, but let's start from the basic information. How to get it and how to get modifications for the Gauss shotgun. In order to get Gauss shotgun, you will need the plan and there is no workaround as Gauss shotgun cannot be traded. You can buy the plans at Foundation and you'll be able to buy it from Samuel, but there is a requirement. You need to max out your reputation with the settlers. There is an option to buy it without the reputation, but only available from Minerva and she's only selling it like once per three months then most likely you will need the reputation. And plan for Gauss shotgun will cost you 500 gold bullion. Modifications are much cheaper, luckily, and you don't need to buy them all. Now to craft the weapon, under weapons workbench you will find it in category energy guns. In order to craft one, you will need to equip science rank 1 and spend resources, including legendary modules. Two of those, in result, you will get a Gauss shotgun that will fit your level. Therefore, if you are high level, it will be level 50 Gauss shotgun with random legendary effects ranging from one to three stars. You can get one star Gauss shotgun, two star Gauss shotguns or three star Gauss shotguns. And you cannot craft two using super duper. Super duper does not work while crafting legendary weapons. Now about the modifications, yes, you can reroll legendary effects using legendary crafting introduced couple patches ago, and you can go for guarantee free star reroll and what you will spend legendary cons, legendary modules, but you will save on the material. Therefore, this is a choice between spending more modules or more materials as crafting multiple Gauss shotguns will give you better odds of getting something that you want, but it costs additional materials. And before I go to other modifications, even though you craft Gauss shotgun from energy weapons, it is not energy weapon. It counts as ballistic weapon, therefore it works with ballistic bock and not with energy weapon stuff. It is a ballistic weapon. There is even no energy damage anywhere. Now, modifications. The receiver. You have multiple options. Main difference between hardened receiver and prime receiver. Prime is using ultra side ammo that is more heavy and have extra damage versus scorched. Versus anything else, the damage is the same. I do not recommend using any other type of the receiver as they basically do less damage without much improvement into anything else. About the barrel, there is shielded and extended option. You should always go for extended. Shielded is just inferior version, something between extended and standard. I don't even know why it's an option. I have no clue. You want extended barrel. After that, the stock options. You can go for a line or forceful stock. Those are my recommendations. In VAT, both perform exactly the same. Forceful stock will give you extra durability for the weapon. Although since the patch that fixed weapon breaking too early, a line stock is really good option because it will improve your accuracy outside of VATS if you decide to use it outside of VATS and durability of the weapon overall is still really, really good. Both stocks offer a slight reduction to VATS AP cost. Precise stock and standard stock do not. About the magazine options, you can go for perforating that will give you armor penetration, but in the same time, it will increase your AP cost. Then it's exchange between AP cost and armor penetration. There is extended magazine as an option. Generally, I do not recommend as it increase AP cost and give you more ammo in the magazine, but is it really worth it? It's nothing else, just more ammo in the magazine and more AP cost. Standard magazine is the lowest AP cost in VATS and in case you're using this gun 
just for its explosive damage, standard magazine can be tempting because perforating magazine gives only small improvement to your explosive damage. About the side, there is a short scope option. I definitely do not recommend it because it comes with reflex sight already installed and reflex sights improve AP cost by quite a bit. Then you don't want to give up on that. Don't use the scope. And about the appearance, I have two paints that you can see in here. Now, the ammo crafting cost. Depend on the receiver that you will choose, you will find this ammo under energy ammo. Again, it's tricky part because it's not energy gun, but it's using energy ammo, but it's still a ballistic gun. If you want to craft cartridges, 15 without any perks, it will cost you 5 lead, 15 steel. Although I don't think you'll be crafting ammo, as you can get so much ammo if you take this gun to daily ops and it's so ammo efficient that most likely you will actually never craft it. If you go for ultra sight option, you will get 60 cartridges for 8 lead, 1 stable crimson flux, 22 steel and 1 ultra sight. Now before we go into any showcase, more information about this gun as there is a lot that you need to know. First, when you look on these damage numbers, majority of this damage is explosive portion of this gun. You don't actually see the base weapon damage. The base weapon damage is much, much lower. Therefore, impact damage is way lower than its explosive damage. I will show you what happens when I unequip Demolition Expert. Look at this number, 828 unequipping Demolition Expert and number change to 6 to 4. And from the 6 to 4, about 300, it's actual ballistic weapon damage of this Gout shotgun fully charged. You need to fully charge it, you will achieve 300 of the ballistic damage. The bigger half, like 340 or something, calculating quickly in my head, 55% of this number is explosive damage. If I add Demolition Expert, damage goes up, but keep in mind the ballistic portion of the damage remains at around 300, therefore like have like 540 of so explosive damage, therefore explosive damage is a majority of damage output from this gun. It's basically 8 projectiles, each projectile is getting 15% extra damage from explosion by default, if you multiply each other, you have 120% bonus to explosive damage. If you add Demolition Expert, we are getting close to 200% bonus as explosive damage. Counted, of course, from the ballistic portion, that's around 300. With all my current perks equipped with this build. Then that's one thing. The second apply to Tenderizer. A Tenderizer card gives you extra 10% damage for 10 seconds after you attack. But as Tyr explained really nicely in his video, if you want to see explanation with all the details, then I will drop a link in pin comment to Tyr video explaining how this card stuck with itself. But basically what it does with multi-projectile weapons, you are getting 40% multiplicative damage instead of 10. And on top of that, if you are on a very responsive server, when you shoot the Gauss shotgun, the impact will apply the tenderizer and 40% damage bonus will be used for the explosive damage calculation, but only on very responsive server. Otherwise, it's too slow and doesn't work like that. That's additional tricky part. Apart from that, even though the range on the weapon is 120, explosive portion of the damage is not affected by damage drop-off. Therefore, explosion does full damage regardless of range. Fire rate stated in here is totally irrelevant as fire rate is determined by if you play in first person or, or third person. What's a little bit bizarre, but you want to play in third person. You have much higher fire rate if you play in third person. And now I will continue talking about this weapon while we fight some enemies. What's really important to know, explosive portion of the damage is not affected at all by the charge. 
Therefore, as you can see, I'm not charging the weapon and I'm one-shotting those super mutants. But I can one-shot them only because I'm on the private ward. Therefore, I have really good, really good response time from the server. And I can one-shot them regardless if I use my anti-armor or vampire gauss shotgun. As tenderizer is applied and I'm getting 40% damage bonus. And now maybe for comparison, if I drop the tenderizer, no longer one shot on those super mutants. Therefore you can see this mechanic. That makes this gun very unique. I hope you are able to follow what I'm saying, as there is a lot to digest. So this weapon do not behave like any other. And as I was saying, I will show you the fire rate in third person. That's the fire rate. The problem is, if you fire so fast, I'm trying to reload and I cannot. But if I fire the last round, it will reload itself and fixes itself. Now in the first person, that's the fire rate. Like the half. I cannot fire any faster. It's the maximum speed. And here you can see that there is eight projectiles. One shot makes eight holes on the wall, although quite often, visually, there is only six projectiles coming out, probably for rendering purposes. Now about the legendary effects, I will re-equip tenderizer first. About the legendary effects, I do recommend Vampire the most, as this is a shotgun after all. You have eight projectiles hitting, followed by eight explosions. The healing amount is just crazy. And here he survived the shot, he survived the shot. That's a little bit of inconsistency related to explosions and servers. They do not always cooperate very well. And there is sometimes conflict of information if enemy should be dead or shouldn't be dead. When it happened, enemy just decide to ignore the damage. Although it's not a big issue, it's not happening very often. About other legendary effects, Anti-armor, bloodied, all the standard stuff, aristocrats, those are all good prefixes for you. But vampire definitely will give you the highest benefit, especially if you are using it as a quick tap explosive weapon to do a clear run or anything you are doing on everyday basis. About the second star effects, I do like the most VAT's hit chance as it basically changes this weapon into VAT's sniper as damage drop-off is not happening for the explosions, you can snipe as long as you can hit in VATs. If not that, you can use for the second star whatever you feel like you can use. I only like the VATs hit chance. Damage while aiming is not is nice, but you really want to use this gun in VATs. I will show you for comparison. If I try to do the same thing without VATs, even fully charging, I need two shots to kill anything. If I do not charge and I'm using it outside of VATS, I'm doing half the damage and I still need two shots. And that's because the VATS magically multiply, basically double your explosive damage. Now I know exactly how it's happening, but VATS is magical and you are getting twice the explosions, twice the fun and twice the kills. Why outside, outside of VATS, there is no such magic. And about the third star, AP cost is of course, if you are using a weapon mainly in VATS. Oh, this was even worse, four shots outside of VATS. Then you really want cheaper AP. And that's the best one you can get. Other options, fine if you need them. Less AP cost, it's absolute number one for me. And that will conclude the full guide to Gauss Shotgun. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope it was helpful. And I'm curious now, let me know. Did you know everything I said in this video about Gauss Shotgun? Or did you learn something new? I was playing a lot recently with Gauss Shotguns and I can say one thing. This weapon is absolutely unique. There is no other weapon that behave like Gauss Shotgun. And that being said, thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.